All right, so we're back. Today we're gonna to do just another traditional cigar review and talk about uh, one of the sort of newer companies. I don't know if you'd call it a boutique brand, but uh, Crown Heads. And uh, they're, uh, uh, they have some really good cigars. I'm gonna smoke one that I think is their best. And uh, we'll talk about some of theirs. So before I do that, we'll do the obligatory watch check. Um, again, get the Seiko Astron. Uh, that is, um, never loses time because it's solar powered. It's, uh, one of the more unique watches I've got. Uh, just wearing my, uh, traditional, uh, cowhide cowboy boots from Rios of Mercedes today. Yeah, it was out there. We got, uh, Liza over here who's enjoying a pig ear. Um, the Greyhound putting those teeth to the test. We got another Greyhound over there that, was thinking about eating her pig ear. We got a little mutt dog there that's already finished hers. And a uh, chalky lab somewhere. But uh, anyway, let's get into the Euro Cave and see about these crowned heads. So there's so many brands anymore. It's just hard to keep track of them. So one of the good ones, and I may review it down the road, is uh, this uh, Mil Diaz. And um, I haven't smoked it, so I thought about doing that today, but I'm going to do this uh, Las Calaveras, which I think this line that comes out like once a year from Crowned Heads, if it'll focus away from that other one. Uh, this is the 2023, and uh, I think they're the best of the Crowned Heads lines. Now, some of the years are better than others. I particularly think this uh, 2023 is a really good one. But we'll see. I've smoked one. We'll fire this one up, see how it is. And we'll talk about some of the the uh, other in the Crown Head line that uh, maybe I've had or that I've heard of. Um, and we can kind of go through that. So, so anyway, so the Crown Heads, I'm going to take her out of the wrapper here. Take a look at it. It's uh, got a nice focus, maybe, 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 maybe not. Um, in any event, geez, sometimes the camera works so good. There it is. Uh, but you can see it's a dark wrapper. Um, it's it's a nice, nice size. Uh, this is the. 5 and 5 eighths by 54 so it's a it's a good size 54 ring gauge is I think uh, pretty good you know it's ring gauge standard sizes have gone up over the years and uh, I would say 54 is a uh, you know it, it's a bigger ring gauge but it's, it's almost kind of standard nowadays so the wrapper doesn't appear real oily. Um, it's dark for sure. <clears throat> the pre-light uh, uh, draw is is good. No, no obstructions that can be noted. Um, not much of a flavor. Pre-light. Little tad of chocolate. So we'll get her fired up here. Get her nice and charred. We'll get her good and do the three puff test, right? To see once you once you get it evenly lit around the edges you should be able to take one two and three puffs and get a perfect draw so let's try it one two three pretty close um, a well-packed cigar 
for sure. The draw is good. Uh, the flavor right away seems um, pretty creamy. It's got some strength to it. Got just a tad bit of spice, not a lot. Um, it's good, it's good, I like it. Um, so this is the, uh, I guess this is the 10th release of the Las Calaveras series. Um, so since 2016, they've released four Vitolas each year, 24 count boxes. Generally around the uh, $13, $14 price range. Um, this one, they say they're bringing back the Broadleaf, the Connecticut Broadleaf. I do like Connecticut Broadleaf wrapper. It's not, um, it's not real oily, as I mentioned, but I, I'm not a big fan of the Connecticut wrapper. I think it's just too mild, but the Connecticut Broadleaf is much darker, and I think it's pretty flavorful. So, um, great construction, no issues with the draw. Not seeing a whole lot of uh, reviews here. Let's see. Maybe here it is. Here's one, maybe. Yeah, from Half Wheel. And, um, yeah, I, I do like the annual release idea of these. You kind of look forward to these in the cigar stores. Um, every year, I've, I've pretty much tried each, each one. Um... You know, they're. I, I've never been disappointed, right, in any of these. Uh, some are better than others. Um, you know, this uh, half wheel is talking about. So when they started out, I guess in 2014 was their first one. So, wow, time really flies. So. Yeah, I remember these looking at the different wrappers or the labels. Um, I think they're all pretty good. Uh, this is a Nicaraguan tobacco with the Connecticut Broadleaf wrapper. Binder fillers, Nicaragua. Um, Good flavor. I would say, you know, medium, uh, medium to strong, maybe that that's, uh, but it, I wouldn't call it a, a strong cigar. Totally. I'd say it's, you know, it's closer to the medium end. Very good aroma. I, I agree with that. Um, a little bit of chalkiness. Yeah, that's what the half wheel says. So I, I, I kind of uh, can taste that. Um, but uh, an overall very uh, pleasant tasting cigar. I, I enjoy it. Um, So far, again, no issues on the draw, the construction. So, Half Wheel, they gave it a pretty meager score of an 84. I, I think it's better than that. Um, 
I'd say it's in the 90, you know, it's maybe a 90, in my view, but, I mean, I've had several of them, so. You know, none of them have, uh, have I been disappointed in. So, so I think you'll do well if you pick up those um, crowned heads, um, Las Calaveras. Now, the there's a story behind the Las Calaveras, um, and I forget it. So let me see if I can jog my memory here. So, yeah, so it's uh, the skull, I guess. It's um, the Day of the Dead celebration in Mexico. So, a little bit morbid, I guess. Um, the holiday celebrated in Mexico, November 1st and 2nd. Um, the heads are used to remind people to celebrate life and mortality, to look at the past and the future, all the while being present. Um, they are a way for us to appreciate and acknowledge that life is sacred, but death is another rite of passage in our lives, no less sacred than life itself. Death, too, is alive. The inevitable is not to be feared or avoided. It's to be embraced and be danced. So, different way of looking at it, I, I guess. Um, nonetheless, it makes for a good cigar. So, uh, I'll give you that. So, the crowned heads lines. Let's see what we got here. Um, yeah, good stuff. They, they really do have a lot of... Um, Really good cigars. I, you know, they they have the four kicks: Headley Grange, Jericho Hill, Tennessee Waltz, La Imperiosa. And then, like I said, then they've got uh, the um, the Mastia. So I, I don't know. They've got a few more than that. I don't know why it's just limited to that on their website, but. Um, of all those that I mentioned, uh, the the one that that I think really comes to mind that impressed me is the La Imperiosa. Now that one is a strong cigar. Um, if you go with the La Imperiosa, you know, be ready, be ready, because it's um, you know you're going to have some strength there. So. Looking at some of the other ones, they, so they got the Juarez series. I've had that one. That one's okay. Uh, La Vereda is uh, their newer cigar. Hi, Wadi. Come up here, boy. And uh, the La Vereda I thought was good, but uh, I think it's a little overpriced for what you got. You know, I this this one uh, Calaveras is less expensive, and I think better. Uh, so the Mil Diaz I haven't tried yet. Um, I'm looking forward to that. Maybe I'll do a review. The La Passatiere, uh, the French name. I thought that was a very good cigar. If uh, if you watch my other videos, I did one on uh, making gumbo and uh, to celebrate sort of the French theme of gumbo I uh, smoked a uh, Le Patissier I guess um, and uh, I thought that was good um, they've got some other ones that I see I haven't tried this Mother Church uh, Headley Grange I think I tried it was okay Four Kicks was decent uh, Jericho Hill I thought was also decent and um As I mentioned, the La Imperiosa, I thought, was uh, just a great, uh, great cigar. So, La Creme, yeah, La Creme, I had one of those, too. Uh, I thought it was um, decent. You know, it wasn't uh, 
uh, so far, the only ones that have really knocked me away, you know, where I've said, wow, this is really, really good, are the La Imperiosas in these uh, Las Calaveras. Um, looking at some of their other brands again, the other lines in there. So I think that's about it. So, good, good cigar. Um, you know, I'm also looking to see. I don't know what the highest rated Las Calaveras was. I know some years are better than others. Again, this one, 2023. I thought, I thought it was better than the 2022. Um, but Half Wheel didn't seem to think so. You know, they, they rated this 2023 as an 85. And the 2022 they had as a 91. So, again, sometimes it's... Uh, depends, right? It depends on... on uh, Maybe the cigar you got sometimes depends on what you had to eat that day. And, and uh, you know, sometimes it's just, it just depends. It's a different, different view. That's why it's good, I think, to listen to cigar reviews, go into cigar shops, check it out, try them for yourself. I mean, sometimes there's a consensus on which ones are, are really good and which ones aren't. But not always, not always the case. Um, let's see if there's any others. So Half Wheel. Let me see the review of the Purple Label one from 2020. be honest, I'm not sure I remember that one. Purple Label. That had an Oscuro, a Bano Oscuro wrapper. The wrapper looks good. That, that looks like a nice cigar. I don't know. Maybe I, maybe I did miss that one. That, that one got an 88 score. Um, so my recommendation if you get into your cigar shop you see the Las Calaveras check it out I think Crowned Heads is uh, well on its way to becoming one of the more reputable cigar manufacturers uh, good stuff oh I'm just maybe maybe 20% through this thing and uh, it's very good I, I like it nice cigar so until next time um, we'll, we'll see you soon beautiful fall day starting to get a little colder the leaves are falling my favorite time of the year you know you can see it out there all those leaves looks really nice so we hope to see you See you back soon. Thanks for supporting my channel. All right, bye-bye.